only some days the pollen grains structure internal structure general account already learned um, now it is something about uh, pollen grains they are pollen viability pollen products pollen allergy pollen bank so what do you mean by that <clears throat> the period of pollen grains that remain functional the period of pollen grains that remain functional is called pollen viability the activity of pollen grains the tendency of germination uh, which are all depending upon the nature of the pollen grain and so the duration or the period or the span of pollen grains that remain functional is called a pollen viability pollen viability means you know in wheat paddy like uh, grasses the viability of pollen grains the viability of pollen grains is only for 30 minutes only for 30 minutes they remain functional after that they will not germinate when the pollen after the pollination if takes place whereas the members of family like uh, rosaceae rosaceae leguminosae solanaceae except etc the viability of pollen grains will be for months they remain functional for months several months not several months one hour two maximum two months one month within one month they remain functional otherwise it will dry off hmm? see the period of pollen grains that remain functional is called a pollen viability example in wheat paddy like grasses the viability of pollen grain is only for 30 minutes <coughs> and the second example the members of family like families like rosaceae leguminosae solanaceae the viability of pollen grains will be for months four months maximum one month one or two months okay and that is about uh, pollen viability then pollen products
പോളം ഗ്രെയിൻസ് ആർ ന്യൂട്രീഷണൽ നോട്ട് ഓൾ ദ പോളം ഗ്രെയിൻസ് ദി പോളൻ ഗ്രെയിൻസ് ആർ ന്യൂട്രീഷണൽ ഹൻസ് some of the pollen grains some pollen grains some pollen grains are edible eatable some pollen grains are are used as syrups drugs etc b pollen example some pollen grains are used to make syrups and drugs hence they are medicinal so medicinal some pollen grains are used to make syrups drugs etc hence they are medicinal example bee pollen then the pollen grains of some plants are used to buy athletes athletes and race horses for better performance see something about pollen grains generally pollen grains are very small and they are nutritional also and some pollen grains are edible they are taking as stimulant we can say some pollen grains are used to make syrups drugs etc hence they are medicinal example bee pollen pollen tablets will be there uh, it is highly expensive and moreover it is used as stimulant and for the uh, body health okay the pollen grains of some plants are used by athletes and race horses so those horses participate in horse race their uh, their muscular activity will be stimulated by some pollen grains in western and eastern countries see the pollen grains of some plants are used by athletes and race horses for better performance and so these are all something about uh, the pollen products drugs syrups bee pollen etc okay then pollen allergy <coughs> so formally i told you the pollen grains are very small they have 
of the minute outgrowths and the some are, some are sticky anyway these minute pollen grains will be passing into the lungs through the inspiratory gases or inspiration as it is very small it will make irritation to our uh, respiratory uh, tract and that may lead to the coughing snuffing so and so etc and it will lead to the uh, asthmatic irritations or bronchitic irritations and that is why they are allergic see for example the pollen grains are small and maybe sticky or spinous spinous some pollen grains are allergic or asthmatic or bronchitic etc example the pollen grains of carrot grass or parthenium parthenium imported from america with the wheat grains the pollen grains of carrot grass or parthenium imported from america with the wheat grains will be will be allergic to man see some pollen grains are very are allergic asthmatic or bronchitic etc so you know the pollen grains of carrot grass or parthenium which will be imported from america with the wheat grains knowingly or unknowingly will be allergic to man it will cause asthma or bronchitis etc and that is why the majority of pollen grains are not allergic but these types of plants that producing small pollen grains which will irritating to the respiratory tract and leads to the bronchitic or bronchitic or asthmatic processes say that is about uh, pollen allergy then pollen bank so you know pollen grains are actually used for cross pollination where part of which is a part of crop improvement program so qualitatively and quantitatively high yielding plants 
the pollen grains will be very important for doing cross pollination it is a crop improvement program because new varieties of plants can be easily produced by cross hybridization that you can see later the plant breeding breeding the breeders breed new breeds which are qualitatively and quantitatively high yielding variety of plants so such pollen grains are collected and stored for further use so it will cryopreservate just like the semen collect from animals which is used for herd improvement program or artificial insemination and like that the pollen grains of qualitatively and quantitatively high yielding plants are collected and stored in minus 196 degree centigrade at liquid nitrogen in a frozen state and then it is uh, transporting various parts of the world for cross breeding if needs and so such process is called cryo preservation cryo preservation just like a collection of sperms or semen which will be stored for further uses so we can see such process is called a pollen bank the storage of pollen grains is needed for breeding purposes the breeders breed new breed plants or hybrid plants hybrid plants that are qualitatively and qualitatively and quantitatively high yielding varieties so you know the storage of pollen grain is needed for breeding purposes the breeders breed new breed plants or hybrid plants that are qualitatively and quantitatively high yielding varieties the process of storage of pollen grains in minus 196 degree centigrade in liquid nitrogen in a frozen state for further use is called cryo preservation term is not given in your textbook cryo preservation it is just like a the 
സമൻ പ്രിസർവേഷൻ ഓഫ് ആനിമൽസ് ഫോർ ആർട്ടിഫിഷ്യൽ ഇൻസെമനേഷൻ storage blood bank storage and uh, uh, exchanging the blood if deficiency or deterioration happens for the patients like that cross breeding nowadays is a better program for the crop improvement of better yielding plants see the storage of pollen grain is needed for breeding purposes various plants now we nowadays or it is the era of cross the variety plants production and animals for man's use the breeders breed new breed plants or hybrid plants that are qualitatively and quantitatively high yielding varieties the process of storage of pollen grains in minus 190 degrees centigrade in liquid nitrogen in frozen state for further use is called is called cryo preservation it is just like the semen preservation of animals for artificial insemination is a part of crop improvement program crop improvement program okay and so that is about uh, pollen viability pollen products pollen allergy and pollen bank remember please pollen viability the period of pollen grains that remain functional for pollination and further development pollen products as the pollen grains are of some plants are highly nutritive they are uh, edible most probably in western and eastern countries in india or there also example you know the pollen grains of hibiscus rosa sinensis or china rose is edible for those who are suffering the imbalancing of hormones nowadays it is used some uh, tablets will be produced uh, from the uh, pollen grains of see hibiscus rosa sinensis belong to the malvesia some of the members of our malvesia the tablets are used uh, tablets are produced from the pollen grains which will useful for imbalancing of useful or remedial useful for useful for what the imbalancing of hormones especially the estrogen estrogen hormones then pollen allergy parthenium remember please parthenium parthenium that is characteristics highly irritating to the irritating those who are suffering from asthmatic or uh, bronchitic allergy you know it causes allergy to ban so it was actually imported from america through the all right, when the wheat is imported so the grains will be uh, together with the wheat grains these uh, seeds of these plants or cattigrass also there was also there and now it is only present in india and it is actually uh, allergenic then pollen products you know syrup drugs 
B pollen, which are the products obtained from some pollen grains of the plants. And moreover, it is a stimulant. Some pollen grains are stimulant to the to those performing different kinds of activities. Say you know runners, race horses, which they are all used uh, the stimulant. It is actually medicinal cum stimulant the but for the better performance of the pollen bank. The storage of pollen grains is needed for breeding products purposes. The breeders breed new plants or hybrid plants that are qualitatively and quantitatively high yielding varieties. The process of storage of pollen grains in minus 196 degrees centigrade in liquid nitrogen in frozen state for further use is called cryopreservation. It is just like the semen preservation of animals for artificial insemination. Then the pollen bank process is a part of crop improvement program. Crop improvement program. Better pollen grains will be uh, stored for future purposes. Okay. And so that is about uh, pollen viability, pollen products, pollen allergy, pollen bank. Carpel, ovule, embryo sac, or megasporophyll. Megasporangium Female Gametophytes Gynesium is the female reproductive part of a flower. Gynesium, which is formed of simple units called carpel. Each carpel contains a solid free end which is called stigma. This is stigma and a slender style and a swollen ovary. Ovary has an ovary wall enclosing numerous ovules. Ovary becomes fruit, ovule becomes seed after fertilization. This is ovary, this is ovule. This is thalamus. This is talk. From here, you know, over stigma style ovary. This is parts of carpel. The parts. Stigma is the
ഫ്രീ എൻഡ് ഓഫ് കാർപ്പൽ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ ലാൻഡിങ് പ്ലാറ്റ്ഫോം ഓഫ് It is the landing platform of pollen grains. Usually sticky. See? It may be branched or unbranched most probably unbranched something about stigma stigma is the free end of carpel maybe it's solid it is the landing platform of pollen grains pollen grains are deposited or the receptacle center of pollen grains will be the stigma usually sticky in nature it may be branched or unbranched that is about the stigma region stay is a slender part that connects the stigma and the ovary maybe tubular this is tile connecting stigma to ovary then ovary is the basal swollen part of carpet ovary has an ovary wall ovary wall pericarp fruit wall pericarp ovary wall becomes fruit wall the pericarp pericarp is the protective covering of fruit a simple fruit fruit wall is called pericarp having epicarp mesocarp endocarp ovary becomes fruit and ovary wall becomes the fruit wall see ovary encloses ovary ovary engloses ovule or ovules after fertilization the ovary becomes fruits and ovule become seeds ovary is resting on the thalamus because thalamus is the stout tip part of pedicel the flower stalk on which the floral parts are arranged or 
ഓൾ ദ ഫ്ലോറൽ പാർട്സ് ആർ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ്ഡ് സി ദീസ് ആർ ഓൾ അബൌട്ട് ദ മെഗാസ്പോറോഫിൽ ഈച്ച് മെഗാസ്പോറോഫിൽ ദ കാർപ്പൽ കണ്ടെയ്ൻസ് ത്രീ ഡിസ്റ്റിങ്ക്ഡ് റീജിയൻസ് നെയ്മിലി സ്റ്റിഗ്മ സ്റ്റൈൽ ആൻഡ് ഓവറി യു ഓൾറെഡി ലേൺ ഇൻ ദ മോർഫോളജി ഓൾസോ സ്റ്റിഗ്മ ഇസ് ദ ഫ്രീ എൻഡ് ഓഫ് കാർപ്പൽ വിച്ച് ഈസ് യൂഷ്വലി സോളിഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ റെസെപ്റ്റീവ് സെൻറ്റർ ഓർ ലാൻഡിങ് പ്ലാറ്റ്ഫോം ഓഫ് പോളം ഗ്രെയിൻസ് യൂഷ്വലി സ്റ്റിക്കി ഇൻ നേച്ചർ ഇറ്റ് മേ ബി ബ്രാഞ്ച്ഡ് ഓർ അൺബ്രാഞ്ച്ഡ് സ്റ്റൈൽ ഈസ് എ സെൻറ്റർ പാർട്ട് ദാറ്റ് കണക്ട്സ് ദ സ്റ്റിഗ്മ ആൻഡ് ഓവറി ഇറ്റ് മേ ബി ടു വീലർ ദി ബേസൽ സോളൻ പാർട്ട് ഈസ് ഓവറി വിച്ച് ഈസ് വിച്ച് ഹാസ് ആൻ ഓവറി വോൾ ലേറ്റർ ബിക്കംസ് പെരി കാർപ്പ് ആൻഡ് ദ ഓവറി എൻഗ്ലോസസ് ഒവ്യൂൾസ് ഓർ ഒവ്യൂൾ ആൻഡ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ഫെർട്ടിലൈസേഷൻ after fertilization the ovary becomes fruit and ovule becomes seed ovule becomes seed see you know and so you know ovary style and stigma constitute the parts of a carpel so you know monocarpillary bicarpillary tricarpillary Penda carpillary or multi-carpillary, sin carpus or apocarpus condition. It's already learned in your morphology. If a single carpel is there, it is called monocarpillary. If two, bicarpillary. If three, tricarpillary. If five, penda carpillary. If more than one, multi-carpillary. If they are all united to form a single ovary called monocarpillary. സിൻ കാർപ്പസ് കണ്ടീഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് ഇൻ എ മൾട്ടി കാർപ്പിളി കണ്ടീഷൻ ഇഫ് ദ കാർപ്പൽസ് ആർ ഫ്രീ ഫ്രം വൺ ആൻഡ് അതാർ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് കോൾഡ് അപ്പോ കാർപ്പസ് കണ്ടീഷൻ എക്സാമ്പിൾ റോസ് സി അപ്പോ കാർപ്പസ് കണ്ടീഷൻ ഓൾറെഡി ലേൺ ഇൻ അവർ മോർഫോളജി ഓഫ് ഫ്ലവറിംഗ് ഫ്ലവർ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ബോട്ട് കാർപ്പൽ സ്റ്റെക് മാ സ്റ്റൈൽ ഓവറി Next is ovule or megasporangia. മെഗാസ് പൊറാഞ്ചിയ ഓർ ഓവ്യൂൾ ഓവ്യൂൾ ഈസ് ആൻ ഓവൽ ബോഡി ഡെവലപ്ഡ് ഫ്രം ദി പ്ലാസ് ആൻഡ് ഓഫ് Ovule is an oval body developed from the placentum of ovary. Stock of ovule. Stock of ovule is called a funicle. Stock of ovule is called a funicle, funicle. The proximal end of funicle is connected to the placenta. ൾ 
ascendant is the soft tissue placenta means the soft tissue from which ovules are produced distal end of the funicle is connected to the body of ovule tissue or body of ovule tissue of ovule is called nucellus covered by two layers of membrane two layers that you can see later in documents see megasporangium or ovule that later becomes the seed after fertilization so the ovule is an oval body this is an oval body developed from placentum of the ovary the stalk of ovule is called funicle and this is stock this is body of ovule this is stock stock or stamen is filament that of ovule is funicle this is the proximal end proximal end is connecting to the placenta placenta is a soft tissue seen in the ovary or ovary wall from which the ovules are produced the tish, the distal end of the funicle is connected to the this is distal end here you can see a connective and this is connecting to the body of ovule and this part is called hilum see the point of attachment of see the point of attachment of funicle and called hilum it is just like a connective part connecting part see the point of attachment of funicle and body of ovule this is the body of ovule this is funicle point of attachment of funicle and body of ovule is called hilum this is general account this tissue is called nucellus new cells protective covering that is uh, after the formation of seed it becomes test and tegumen outer integument and inner integument two layers of covering is there to connect the mass of tissue called new cells of the ovule 
so the nucellus is the tissue of the ovule which is connected covered and protected by two layered uh, covering called outer and inner integuments which later becomes the testa tegmen part of seed coats so ovule becomes seed then uh, covering becomes seed coat and two layers of covering is there and see that is general account of a gas parangia here also ovule the most important part of the carpel where inside the embryo sac is developed which is uh, developed within the ovule there the new cells and so from the new cells of the ovule the embryo sac is developed which is the most important part of ovule where inside you know the egg the female gamete is produced and that is why it is also known as female gametophytes female gamete producing tissue or structure female gametophytes okay then Megasporangia produces megaspores. Megasporogenesis. Just like eh? microsporogenesis in uh, male parts. Megaspore. Megasporangia producing megaspore. Megasporangia producing megaspore. Ovule producing the embryo sac how and uh, how the development happens in them the formation and development of functional megaspore from diploid megaspore mother cell after is called see the formation and development of functional megaspore from diploid megaspore mother cell or mmc after meiosis is called megasporangia so we need functional megaspore four megaspores are formed among which what is functional and that functional megaspore develops into female gametophyte where inside you know the female gametes or egg is produced and so we know the formation and development of functional megaspore from diploid megaspore mother cell after meiosis is called megasporogenesis so you know formation and development of microspore from microspore mother or pollen mother cells after meiosis that is called microsporogenesis here it is 
megasporogenesis resultant product of megasporogenesis is functional megaspore otherwise we can say or in Indian you can say the microsporogenesis results the formation of microspore or pollen grains so formation of pollen grains microsporogenesis formation of micro megaspore megasporogenesis then how and what development takes place from megaspore mother cell to the formation of megaspore functional megaspore or embryo sac suppose ovule is an oval body at the free end of this tissue A cell become permanent, sorry, prominent. That means this is new cellless tissue. This is funicle. This is anovule, constitute anovule. This is hyla. This is namely in a true sense it is called a archisporial cell which is later modified as megaspore mother cell. This is This particular cell is called archisporial cell and more later modified as megaspore mother cell or MMC which is deployed. So taking this MMC megaspore mother cell it is deployed it undergoes three successive division resulting eight nuclei within the sorry before that it undergoes meiosis sorry it undergoes meiosis Reduction division takes place. RD stands for reduction division. Forming one, two, three, four cells. So within the One, two, three, four. These are all called megaspores. They are haploid. So, in some place, at the free end of the ovule, especially at the new cells. A cell becomes prominent 
which is called archosporial cell that later modified as megaspore mother cell modified as megaspore mother cell and this megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis or reduction division resulting in the formation of four uh, megaspores arranged in linear manner that is called a linear tetrad linear manner one by one so iso bilateral decussate t shaped linear tetrad tetrahedral tetrad the various types of spore tetrads means points remember iso bilateral decussate t shaped linear then uh, tetrahedral see once again please the new cells and ovule carrying new cells the tissue at the free end an archosporial cell which is modified as megaspore mother cell or mmc it is deployed and this cell undergoes reduction division forming four haploid cells the megaspores arranged in linear manner and that is why it is called linear tetrad three of them disintegrates three of them disintegrates and one remain functional and a large in size which is haploid it is called functional megaspore functional megaspore then megaspore is formed and what about the formation of embryo sac so listen the functional megaspore undergoes three successive division the nucleus divides into two first division one two three four second division and host towards the periphery opposite poles third division so the nucleus of the functional megaspore divides three successive division resulting the formation of eight nucleated condition eight nucleated condition So the functional megaspore enlarges in size and becomes female gametophyte. See, 
நெக்ஸ்ட்டில் த்ரீ எமங் தம் ரிமைன் தேர் அட் த ஆப்போசிட் போல்ஸ் ஒன் நியூக்ளியஸ் கம்ஸ் டு த சென்டர் ஃப்ரம் போல் ஃப்ரம் த போல்ஸ் ஸோ த்ரீ ப்ளஸ் த்ரீ ப்ளஸ் டூ எயிட் நியூக்ளியேட் கண்டிஷன் இட் இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி த ஃபீமேல் கேமிட் ஆஃப் ஹைட்ஸ் and so here also the disintegration disintegrant cells and wall formation takes place wall formation takes place and now this is female gametophyte or embryo sac female gametophyte or embryo sac and here you know the disignal region gets ruptured final final stage see the functional bagasse pore three successive division 1 2 3 resulting eight nucleated conditions four each on the opposite poles as per the produ- uh, production of number of nuclei the megaspore becomes a large in size and it becomes the female gametophyte so eight nucleated condition is there uh, among which three each remain on opposite poles of the embryo sac or female gametophyte and wall formation takes place two nuclei from opposite poles remain there in the center that is the nuclei from poles and polar nuclei having no wall formation around them and three cells at the opposite poles and a large single cell in the middle carrying two cells two nuclei so this is
आप चल रही है small opening outer integuments inner integuments agapatas new cells embryo sac polar loci सेंट्रल सेल एंडी पोरल्स चल आसा हाई लेवल these are the parts of a typical these are the parts of a typical 
These are the parts of actually a ovule. So as you know, this ovule becomes this stage, this ovule. This ovule becomes this is the opening is called micropyle, protective covering is indigament, indigaments. Okay, listen please, once again. So, this was the ovule, archisporial cell is developed. It is modified as megaspore mother cell or MMC. And the megaspore mother cell undergoes reduction division resulting in the formation of linear tetrad four megaspores among which three disintegrated and one becomes enlarged that is called a functional megaspore and development of functional megaspore up to the formation of embryo sac Th these are disintegrated cells a large in size that is functional megaspore this one three successive division one two three successive division resulting eight nucleated four each on opposite poles three remain there at the poles one each come to the center from the poles followed by wall formation takes place engulfing a nucleus within the cell whereas centrally located two cells remain there and which is kept inside the large cell the central cell and so this is the embryo sac female gametophyte or embryo sac this disintegrated region becomes uh, cellulose so that so we know this is the minute opening this is minute opening by rupturing the integuments outer and inner integuments so this is micropyle this is micropyle the outer and two integuments two integuments outer and two integuments inner integuments thus becomes two integuments so this is the micropyle this is the opposite region the region of embryo sac at the micropyle end within that there are three cells constitute egg apparatus egg apparatus an egg plus two synergids and egg plus two synergids giving egg apparatus new cell is the tissue of the ovule new cell is. this is embryo sac suddenly you can see two polar nuclei polar nuclei polar nuclei two in number this is the central cell central cell keeping two nuclei by nucleated cell and the portals at the chalasa end chalasa is the place opposite to the micropylar end that is the base of the ovule chalasa chalasa end you can see three cells which are called antipodals then hilum point of attachment of ovule then funicle the stalk of ovule this is an orthotropous ovule here you know the this is the you know funicle micropyle which are all on the same line which is called orthotropous ovule.
So this is the proper formation. An anatropous ovule, here you can see the funic and funicle and micropyle are come near to one another making the ovule anatropous so listen please an anatropous ovule
see here it is the anatropous ovule this is orthotropous ovule in your you know the development will be uh, seen or expressed in your textbook as the orthotropous ovule but the figure given final figure is given the anatropous what is the difference between anatropous and or orthotropous and anatropous ovule in orthotropous ovule the funicle and the uh, micropyle which are all on the same line same line whereas here in in the anatropous ovule the micropyle and micropyle and funicle is coming very near to one another very close to one another this is ortho this is this is orthotropus this is hemi anatropus this is anatropus ambulotropus circinotropus uh, different kinds of ovules will be there to, to remember points to remember this is anatropous ovule no orthotropous ovule this is this is hemi anatropous this is this is camphilotropous this is different kinds of ovule points to number orthotropous micropyle and uh, funicle on the same plane anatropous micropyle and uh, funicle very near to one another hemi anatropous at right angle to funicle the micropyle here not at a right not at all right angle but inner to the hemi trigasi this opening is coming very near to the not so near but near to a star then circinotropus you know uh, ginger etc so remember please this is this is the funiculus opening is there but 360 degree curving is there so this is synotropus synotropus it is not needed for your examination but to remember orthotropus anatropus this is orthotropus this is anatropus development is seen as uh, orthotropus and the final figure is given as anatropus this is uh, this is anatropus second one and here direction is opposite so that funicle and micropyle is very near to one another hence it is anatropous ovule anatropous ovule and this is that that is why we can say the formation and development of uh, diploid 
formation and development of functional megaspore from diploid megaspore mother cell after meiosis is called megasporogenesis megasporogenesis and structure of ovary and some key points in connection with the, uh, the ovule okay see micropi outer and inner integuments then embryo sac chalas chalasa opposite to the region chalasa micropylar end three cells yes, two synergids and an egg cell which is collectively called egg apparatus so central tissue new cellus central two nuclei polar nuclei coming from the opposite poles embryo sac is there that is the female gametophytes the central cell central cell so that is central cell carrying two nuclei then antipodals two antipodals the chalasal end this is chalasa chalasal end and so that is about a micropylar micropyle integuments synergids egg nu nu cellus polar nuclei embryo sac central cell antipodals chalasa so the embryo sac contains three cells cells each on opposite poles three plus three that is six then a large central cell carrying two nuclei like karyotic that is a single cell so three egg apparatus three antipodals plus a central cell constitute seven cells so seven celled seven celled eight nucleated condition is there in a typical embryo sac of angiosperms see about a mature ovule points to remember tissue of ovule new cellus protective covering of new cellus in the gametes stock of ovule point of attachment of funicle to ovule hyla base of the ovule minute opening and the integuments micropyle
region of ovule opposite to the micropyle. Chalasana. Embryo Saki. Largest cell in the embryo sac. That is central cell. By nucleated. By nuclear cell in the embryo sac. Components of Hegapartus. Egg cell. Components of egg apparatus, two synergids and an egg cell. See, listen please. About uh, mature ovule, once again please. These are all endless questions. For our in theory, it is for one more questions. Tissue of the ovule, new cellus, protective covering of the new cellus, integuments, stock of ovule, funicle, point of attachment of funicle to the ovule, hilum, base of the ovule, chalasa. The minute opening at the integuments, micropyle. Region of ovule opposite to the micropyle, chalasa. Largest cell in the new cellus, embryo sac. Largest cell in the embryo sac, central cell. Binucleated cell in the embryo sac, central cell, bicaryote. Binucleated or dicaryote. Dicaryotic. Dicaryotic cell in the embryo sac, central cell. <coughs> Component, components of egg apparatus, two synergids and an egg cell. Three cells in the embryo sac at its chalasal end, antipodals. Three cells in the embryo sac at its micropylar end is egg apparatus. Three cells in the embryo sac at the chalasal end, antipodals. That of micropylar end, egg apparatus. Mature embryo sac is seven celled and eight nucleated. Seven celled and eight nucleated. Okay. Female parts, the male gametes will be produced after pollination during fertilization. Male, female gamete is get ready for receiving the male uh, gametes from the pollen grains. So pollination, a pollination which is an intermediate process for fertilization in plants. So pollination.
the transfer of foreign grains from under to the stigma transfer of pollen grains from under to the stigma is called pollination so what is pollination the transfer of pollen grains from under to the stigma so this is the stigma and this is the under here pollen grains are produced this pollen grain from the under is deposited either directly or by the agents anyway the transfer of pollen grains from under to the stigma is called pollination pollination is of two types namely pollination is of two types namely self pollination and cross pollination self pollination or cross pollination self pollination and cross pollination so cross pollination is also known as allogamy or xenogamy allogamy or xenogamy self pollination is of two types sorry pollination is of two types self pollination and cross pollination cross pollination is called allogamy or xenogamy you can say it first is self pollination self pollination the transfer of pollen grains from under to the stigma of the same flower or stigma of that of another flower of the same plant the transfer of pollen grains from under to the stigma of the same flower or that of another flower of the same plant is called self pollination see what is self pollination the transfer of pollen grains from under to the stigma of the same flower or that of another flower of the same plant suppose this is a plant so it produces beautiful flowers see these are all flowers transfer of pollen grains from under to the stigma of the same flower or that of another flower of the same plant see that of another flower of the same plant so 
also this is this is the pollination takes place in the same plant the same plant that is cell pollination cell pollination is it is of two types cell pollination that is autogamy and gitanogamy autogamy and gitanogamy see transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma that is pollination transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma is pollination in the same flower or another flower of the same plant these two constitute the cell pollination so here cell pollination is of two types that is autogamy and gitanogamy autogamy pollination in the same flower transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same flower that is autogamy or transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of another flower of the same plant is called gitanogamy that is pollination in different flowers of the same plant flowers of the same plant plant is same flowers different if it is in the same plant is autogamy or if in uh, the pollination takes place in different flowers of the same plant it is called gitanogamy uh, uh, so gitanogamy here here an agent is needed thus an agent oriented self pollination is chitnoga to another points see here we can say the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same plant that is autogamy here transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of another flower of the same plant that is called gitanogamy both autogamy and gitanogamy constitute the self pollination so listen transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma is called pollination pollination is of two types first is self pollination second is cross pollination or allogamy or xenogamy the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same flower or that of stigma of another flower of the same plant is called self pollination self pollination is of two types autogamy and gitanogamy transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of the same flower is autogamy transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of another flower of the or different flowers of the same plant is called uh, is called gitanogamy and so to say shortly autogamy is pollination in the same flower gitanogamy is pollination in different flowers of the same plant here an agent is needed thus an agent oriented self pollination is gitanogamy see here the figure listen the figure a plant with numerous flowers pollination takes place here here the pollination takes place autogamy 
so from this flower to this eternogamy this to this eternogamy but the agent is stained under otherwise no eternogamy takes place though it is self pollination then second one this is first second is cross pollination or xenogamy or cross pollination allogamy or xenoga plus two level so you can go through cross pollination allogamy xenogamy so the transfer of pollen grains from under to the stigma of the flower of another plant flower of another plant of the same species plant may be genetically different Gen genetic variations genetically different plants this process will be going on so cross breeding or logami or xenogami which are all the part of a crop improvement program or we can say green a part of green revolution in order to produce qualitatively and quantitatively high yielding varieties of plants can be produced through this method so disease resistant capacity uh, prevent the insect pest or uh, yielding capacity greater early production of seeds then flowers etc which all the benefits of new plant or hybrid plants to improve the uh, productivity to maintain the deterioration or deficiency of food and other needs caused by increase in population that you can see in the strategies on the next lesson you can see in detail plant breeding the need of plant breeding in the science or in agriculture see here suppose two plants this is a plant this is another plant and the leaves same species but the leaves are entirely different same species two different kinds of plants species same producing beautiful leaves two plants of the same species pollination takes place between this that is eternogamy what is eternogamy the trans sorry uh, cross pollination or logamy or xenogamy the transfer of pollen grains from under to the stigma under from pollen grains from the under to the stigma of another stigma of the flower of another plant of the same species species same one is genetically 
different but speech is same but the pollination between two plants of the same species that is called allogamy or cross pollination see listen cross pollination allogamy or synogamy is the transfer of pollen grains from another to the stigma of another plant stigma of the flower of another plant of the same species is called uh, called allogamy is called sarogami or allogami or cross pollination see once again so simple pollination transfer of pollen grains from another to the stigma is called pollination pollination is of two types self pollination and cross pollination see self pollination the transfer of pollen grains from another to the stigma of the same flower or that of another flower of the same plant is called self pollination self pollination is of two types autogamy and heterogamy pollination in the same flower is pollination in the same flower is autogamy pollination or in different flowers of the same plant is allogamy cross pollination transfer of pollen grains from another to the stigma of the same flower or transfer of pollen grains from another to the stigma of the flower of another plant of the same species is called a, sorry, here here an agent is strictly needed here agent is strictly needed otherwise there is no chance for cross pollination so maybe insects birds ants uh, man artificial man artificial pollination man or uh, snakes snails uh, then water air which are all the mediators of cross pollination see remember please in the agent oriental oriented self pollination is the tenogami but agent strictly needed in cross pollination because transferring the pollen grains from one flower to the another flower of another plant flower of another plant so that is why so the transfer of pollen grains from another to the stigma of the flower of another plant of the same species plant may be genetically different is called synogamy or allogamy or cross pollination see here an agent is strictly needed and so that is about general account of pollination then
animals insects birds ants snails snakes bats wind they are abiotic so finally endomophily ornithophily mermitophily malacophily ophiophily kiraptorophily animophily hydrophily hydrophily such flowers are superfluous and amorphous ornithophilus ah nya vaashamla vaashamla ayyo mermitophilus agents and types of pollination and flowers animals insect by birds and snails snakes bats wind water these are abiotic these are biotic agents rest on the next class okay